Welcome to Field of Fork. I'm Abby J, chef and owner of Black Hawk Fly Fishing, Abby J's gourmet and co-founder of Southern Farm and Garden Magazine. Today we are delighted to be on the farm here at Black Hawk. We're going to talk about the farm, we're going to talk about fly fishing, and we're also going to have the little school here with us today. But first I want to introduce to you my first guest, Lewin Poe. He is now guiding for us here at Black Hawk. How are you today? I'm well, Abby. Thank you. Good. Thank you for having me. Good. So uh, tell us about the river. And you you met us uh, probably in June this year. Uh, you came over and fly fished. and I did. Uh, so after I retired from the service, I uh, decided that this was kind of the path that I wanted to take. So I've been with Abby and John for about a month. And the river's actually fishing really well, um, despite the, the lack of water. Uh, with the proper management at the farm, the Spring Creek coming down from Rapier and the, the shade and proper management being closed through the, the summer months when it was really hot. I've, I've fished several days over the last month, two or three weeks, and uh, it's fishing really well. Fish in the 25, 26 inch class uh, and all variations, rainbows and browns. Lewin, uh, you fished a lot of different places. You even got your guide certificate out in Bozeman, I think. I, I did. And I thought that was really unique. Uh, he really wanted to go the extra mile to become one of our professional guides. And how does our river and what we do here in, in, at Blackhawk differ from other operations? Well, I, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'd rather have the weather that's in Bozeman. But mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, even from my time in Bozeman and I fished throughout North Carolina and Tennessee for a couple months as I was winding down my military career uh, all over the East Coast really. And the the hospitality at Black Hawk and then, you know, the, the river is a beautiful place to lose yourself, learn amazing things and fly fish. And that's kind of why I settled on the Soqui and, and eventually Black Hawk. Well, the the farm we're we're on a farm. It's uh, 100, I think 115 acres here, and we do a lot of farming. And today, that's what we're going to try to do is educate the kids on on what we do here. And I think we differ because uh, there's a farm around uh, our fishery. And not only do we have to take care of our food and farm, we have to take care of our fishery. There's so many things we've had to do over the years to maintain that fishery. And one of the things was we treated our trees with the woolly adelgia beetle problem we had. We had like 2,000 mm. trees. I don't you know, you see the little ribbons around the trees. When we take the tour shortly, you'll see that. But that was one of the things we never did uh, think we would have to do or even spend that kind of money. It was thousands and thousands of dollars, and we have to do that uh, project. It has to take place every three years. So it's a lot of river management and keeping up with the trails and and also we're just lucky enough to be in this environment where we can hold the fish and they don't die every summer because we're, we, like you said, we've got creeks, we got springs that run into our, our water flow here at Black Hawk. We do need rain. There's not any uh, shortage of, of rain. We need a lot of rain. Uh, Sure. But it d doesn't mean that the fish is not good. It's still good, and, and we're just blessed to, to have a, a, a fishery that we can keep intact. And I think that's the key, Abby, is the proper maintenance year-round uh, with the trees and the shade and the, the water, uh, taking care of the fish. I think that's what has allowed Black Hawk to maintain an, a, a stable fishery that's sustainable for, for years to come. And, you know, my fishermen come back because I cook for them, Lou. <laughs> and you, you know I, I love to cook. And this is one thing we're going to share with you later on today is I've got the little school coming. To, and they're going to find out a little bit about uh, where our food comes from. Uh, and that's important to pass on to generations. And I think that uh, if you teach the younger generation 
you know, where our food comes from, maybe they'll take a little bit of this back and, and practice it because, you know, we're in the world of technology, you know, people are not getting outside enough and they need no. the exercise. That's one of the problems people being overweight is because they're not getting the exercise. And on this river, you get a lot of exercise. We have uh, two miles of private water and we're open year round. And um, I think that uh, with, with all of my professional guides, I, I think that you can come here, even with your corp a corporate group, even if you don't know how to fly fish, uh, we can teach you how to do that. And um, most of the memories I take back when I fish with other people is I remember the food. And uh, it's, um, it's really good that we have a place where we can uh, grow food, uh, teach other people how to grow food. and. I had a farmer's market, but uh, we have, we, we don't, we didn't have a farmer's market this year because there was other things that uh, we had to do and, and we had a shortage of, of rain. So uh, I was lucky enough to even get my crop to uh, preserve what I did for my fishermen. And I, I do a lot of tomatoes. I did about 200 quarts of soup this summer. So, and we're gonna share this with the kids uh, this afternoon. Uh, I made my special chili, and um, you've had it already. I have. I so have. Um, it's wonderful. Yeah. So, uh, is there anything you'd like to share with our audience about? I, I would just say that, based on my limited time here, the staff is is amazingly professional. The guides, Abby, uh, and the way that the places run, the fishing is, is amazing. But it really is an experience. When you come to Black Hawk, you don't just get a, a day on the river. I, I like to call it an experience. We've got great guides out there that that thrive on new clients. We like to have people here. We like to teach children, uh, adults alike. As Abby said, to get back out in, into the, the woods and back to nature, it's a great place as it was for me at one point in my life to find solace. And we've got an amazing staff here prepared to to put you through that experience. Well, we just welcome you, Lou, and Thanks, I can't Abby. wait for a great season ahead. And and come on out, I'm sure we can uh, hook you right up. We just need more rain, and I, yeah. I know it will get here soon enough. So thank yes, you for being uh, here today. And, yes, and the little, little school will be here shortly, and we'll be right back. North Georgia. Don't miss the new Appalachian Craft Brew, Stew, and Q Festival at the Georgia Mountain Fairgrounds, Saturday, October 22nd. 18 craft brewers from Georgia and North Carolina will be there with their brands for you to sample. Plus food, Appalachian and Americana music, regional arts and crafts, a cornhole tournament, and more. Saturday, October 22nd from 11 to 8 at the Georgia Mountain Fairgrounds in Hiawassee. Get your tickets online by visiting georgiamountainfairgrounds.com. Blackhawk and today hey. we're doing a hey. farm tour yeah we're gonna go down with uh, uh, our uh, Mr. Lou and he's gonna teach y'all a little bit about fly fishing he's gonna show you the river and are y'all ready let me hear a yes yes all right I'm so excited you're here and uh, after that we're gonna come back up and I'm gonna talk to you about uh, agriculture and uh, where our food comes from so I'm so excited that you're here today. We've been open, Black Hawk has been open for 20 years. We celebrated our 20th anniversary uh, this year. So we've been doing fly fishing for a long time and we welcome groups, families, and kids to, to enjoy our passion. So let's get started. Let's go to the river. I know myself. This is a 
our herbs are and peppers. Have you ever peppers over there? What we try to do is deliver an artificially made fly that matches something in nature that we think the trout may be feeding on and then we try to get them to in some of the examples and I'll just so you can look real quick these are some of the bugs right different uh, different types of bugs that we tie depending on the time of year and what kind of bugs are hatching in nature but so what we do is we attach one of these to the fly line and then we try to convince is the best word convince the trout to see it as natural food and eat it so I'm gonna go down here and I'll just throw a few flies in so we can at least we'll see if the fish move towards it or not uh, you guys stay up here with Miss Abby and what we do so just like Emmett said I like to put this up the river ahead of the fish so it floats down with the appearance of being a natural food source that we hope if it's a time that fish are feeding want to come out and eat and well that is the the game of fly fishing it's kind of like a chess like a chess match hey if he doesn't want this one what's the next color or what's the next fly or I, I take people on the river all the time and I think that it's a great opportunity for people to not only get back to nature you learn patience you learn how to be calm you know and work through problem sets hey if the fish are not eating one fly then we we change it right and we we learn how to work through problem sets much like a a chess match oh, oh we got one <sighs> So what I do is I immediately want to get, because if you think about what we talked about, which is sustainability, right? We want these guys to be here for generations to come, right? So I want to get that fly out of his mouth and then immediately you know you guys can see a fish you see him and what we want to do oops, is then hold him back in the water until he's caught his breath and he's ready to go he'll usually let us know when that is Give me a little tail wiggle and swim off. But it's much like a human athlete. After they do a, a sprint or a marathon, you have to catch your breath. And that's kind of what the fish is doing. So there he goes. So that's fly fishing. I hope you guys enjoyed that. With cable television production studios in Habersham and Towns Counties, you're watching Windstream Cable Television Channel 4, home of local origination programming in North Georgia. From weekly church services to sports and community events, we've got you covered. Join us 24-7 for local programming at its best. Windstream Cable Television, it's what people are watching. Okay, welcome back to Field of Fork, and today we have the little school from Clarksville, Georgia. Welcome, everyone. Are you excited to be here? Yeah. Okay, we're doing a show today on where our food comes from and our fishery. We just caught some fish and 
uh, Mr. Lou called a really nice rainbow. And now we're back. Today, you know, I, I, I grow a lot of things and some of the things I love to grow are flowers. And um, I cultivate my seeds every year and I wanted to show you how to do that. These are sunflowers. This is a, a small sunflower. This year, I didn't grow these. I grew the mammoths, the big mammoth sunflowers. They grow about 12 feet tall. And so what I did, in order to get seed next year, you have to let them dry. You have to let them dry, they droop over, and then what you do, you take this, can you help me here? Okay, just hold this. And what you do is you just take it, and there's the seed. Y'all know that? And the seeds just come out, just like this. And they, it's got to be dry enough. If it's not dry enough, they'll get moist and they'll have mold. So we're gonna, we're just gonna get all these seeds like this. Isn't this neat? Did y'all know this? No. Okay. So if you're growing sunflowers, you don't have to go every year and buy the seed. You can, you can take these, let them get dry, almost to where they're just really almost gone. And they have to have the color though. You have to see the, the black color too. And what we wanna do is get all of them. And then what I'm gonna do for each of you, I'm gonna give you a pack of seeds to take home with you. And so the seed packs are right here. And right here it tells you, you plant two to three seeds. You plant them about two feet apart and a half an inch deep. So everybody gets to go home with a pack of seeds. How about that? And this is to grow, you start growing your garden, making your garden beautiful. So this is your pack of seeds. And we'll, we'll finish up everyone after we finish the next activity. That's the sunflowers, the mammoth sunflowers, okay? Now, the next, uh, the next one we'll do is the, the zinnias. The zinnias are these purple flowers over here. You see the purple flowers? And these were planted in honor of my dad. He passed last September and I wanted to, you know, plant something in honor of him. And I have this whole field across the road and uh, you can take these. They grow about four feet tall and they're annuals. They don't come back. Some people say they do, but they are annuals. They don't come back. And what you want to do, though, you can take these after they dry out, and it's the same, same process as before. You want to, all right, you want to get them to where they're really dry, and we'll do the same thing here. We'll take them, and what you want to do is... You can cut cut part of that, but your seeds are right there. See them? There's the seeds. See? And what we'll do is we'll put the seeds out here, and we'll just pull them out. And you put them in a pack. You take these home, and your mother's just going to be so delighted that she can grow these in her garden next spring. You, you start planting them around the spring, springtime. So we'll put these in your little pack. The other little pack I have for these. And it's two seeds. What I do is I plant these in rows. As you see out here, you plant these in rows. You plant them six inches apart. If they get too close, you can uh, thin them out. And only, you, you, don't, you don't have to put but a little bit of dirt and on top of these and they really they're the flower that keeps on giving because they keep on uh, blooming over and over all summer until it frosts so you think your mom might like a pack of these yes okay question okay so are these little things like right there the seed that's the seed yeah so like yeah you just that that's yeah. just going to dry up even more but what you want to do is let this dry out completely. You can put it on um, anything like a, a, a brown paper bag but, or in the sun, but it's got to dry up. I think these are dry enough, but it could dry up even more, and then you'll have seeds for next spring.
The mammoth sunflowers, I normally plant those the end of April because you want them to bloom. Uh, you can get uh, blooms in early June. It takes about two to three months, I think two months on those. But normally midsummer, you can actually plant and have two crops of mammoth sunflowers. Or you can mix and have, you know, sometimes I mix mammoths with the other varieties so they're staggering, they're different uh, heights and they look real pretty. Okay. Um, I'll have two things. One, we do usually plant the regular size sunflowers um, the same time of year as the mammoth sunflowers. Well, that's what I was just saying. You can do that and have them staggering and it looks really neat and I've done that before. Yeah. But you need to plant the mammoths uh, far, far apart because they are really tall. And, they, and, and we'll take a tour out there and I can show you what they look like after harvest. Jenna? Um, what's the biggest you've ever had? What's the biggest mammoth flower? Oh, they've got over 12 feet tall. And, and I have some that has just uh, finished. You know, I took, we'll go out there and I can show you where I did harvest uh, the seeds that we just got. Mm -hmm. okay. What's the difference between um, perennial and annual? Oh, a perennial comes back every year. You don't have to worry about it. It, it don't. You don't have to. And they they multiply every year. Mm -hmm. An annual is once a year. Sometimes the zinnias can fool you though. They might come back, but if it's a real cold winter, no, they're not going to come back. Any other questions? Well, we're going to get ready for lunch, and I have a, uh, a nice lunch for you guys. I, I make chili for my, uh, my fly fisher people that come in, and I, I put up tomatoes. Every year I put up about 200 quarts. So some of the tomatoes that I uh, put up this year, this is how, when I have a garden and I have all these tomatoes, I have to preserve them, and this is the base that I make my chili from. And it's, and it's really fresh, there's no preservatives, uh, and, and if you really have a, a lot of tomatoes, you can take them to the Heversham cannery. And that, that way it doesn't take as much time and you can get in and out. And, and that's where I, where I went and took these because I have a lot of tomatoes every year that I grow. And normally I grow the Romas and the heirloom tomatoes. Okay, so y'all about ready for lunch? Yeah. Okay. Now you can watch movies, sports, news, and more on all of your internet-ready devices. Windstream cable customers can view up to 50-plus channels on their laptops, smartphones, and tablets with Watch TV Everywhere. It's easy, and for Windstream cable customers, it's free. Visit WatchTVEverywhere.com to register. Then the programs you enjoy are just a click away on your favorite devices. Watch TV Everywhere, another way Windstream says thank you for being our customer. Welcome back to Field of Fork, and we're with the Little School today. And I am so happy to have all these wonderful kids with me. And we're, good, we're talking about where our food comes from. So let me ask you guys, what is this? What kind of corn? Indian corn, Zach. It's Indian corn, it is. I planted this Indian corn uh, last year. My father had seed and the seed uh, is heirloom seed and he wanted me to carry the corn on. Do you know the uses of Indian corn? Does anybody know? Decoration. That's true. Can you eat it? You can. It is some types of corn. Indian corn is edible. Uh, you can ha uh, make cornmeal and grits uh, out of corn but you have to get the right, uh, the right uh, variety of corn. But most of all, 
Uh, Zach is correct. It is for decoration, and and we we like to decorate our fall tables with this. So, um, yeah, it, it's really pretty, and it comes in. You know, when I go and harvest this, you have to have. It's got to be dry. It cannot be like sweet corn. The stalks and everything has to be brown on the vine, on the stalk, uh, for it to be ready to harvest. So. Anyway, I hope you guys had fun today. We enjoyed having uh, you with us. And, and, and we, we've got a special dessert today, and we'll be right back to tell you about it. You're kidding. You gotta trust me. Hands down, our worst buy yet. $50,000? What? 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 This is really bold. You did a great job here. That is a good idea. Watch Flip or Flop Thursday at 9 on HGTV. incorporated some fresh strawberries, fresh lemon, and some protein with a puree of strawberries. And we used a little bit of ice and we mixed it up and we have made a protein smoothie for the kids. It's a nice lit protein, it's pure food. A lot of these kids come to my store already at A to Zinc. They love these things. There's no chemicals, non-GMO, gluten-free, we don't have any coloring, no no sweeteners, no added sugar. So it's a great meal. We want to thank everybody for coming out today. We had a great time on the farm. We learned about farming. We learned about seed cultivation. We learned how to catch a big fish. And in years to come, I hope you get to come back. And I'm in one of my favorite places today. I love to grow peppers. And what do we want to say to everyone? Thank the farmers! Until next time, we'll see you later.